In this video, we're going to discuss Hess's law and how we can calculate the enthalpies of reaction using standard enthalpies of formation. So this idea of Hess's law, again, we're going to make use of this fact that enthalpy is a, is a state function, right? So if, we, um, if we're after the enthalpy of a particular reaction and we can take any path to get there, we can solve for the enthalpy, right? So for example, uh, if we have some reaction A where some reactant A is going to some product D, we can take any path to get there to calculate the enthalpy of this reaction. So for example, if we're after the enthalpy of this reaction, so I have delta H uh, with a subscript of Rxn for delta H of reaction, if that's the enthalpy that I'm after, I can take any path to get there. So I could go from some reactant A to some species B to some species C, and then back to D again. And as long as I know the enthalpy associated with each one of those individual transformations, then I can add all of those up in order to solve for the delta H of the reaction, right? So, um, so the fact that enthalpy is a state function allows us to be able to take any path that we can imagine or any path that's convenient for us uh, in order to solve for the delta H or the enthalpy change of any reaction. So let's take, for example, this reaction that I've written up here. So this is the combustion of methane, CH4. Um, and let's say we're after the delta H of this reaction, right? We can think of any convenient path in order to get there, right? Let's say we don't know the uh, enthalpy associated with this reaction, and we wanted to just devise a convenient path in order to get there. Well, what turns out to be a very convenient path for any chemical reaction is imagining the reactants breaking down into their elemental components and then those elemental components coming back together to form the products, right? So the path that we want to think about for any chemical reaction is first is going to uh, the reactants will break down into their elemental components. So reactants. break down into elemental components. Elemental components. So that's gonna be the first step of our uh, path for this reaction. And then the second step is just those elemental components forming the products, right? So the products are formed. From the elements. Right, you can say either you know elemental or atomistic components, uh, whatever floats your boat. But essentially, these are the uh, the two steps that you're going to more or less break any chemical reaction, be able to break any chemical reaction down into. Right, so let's take our example that we have up here. Right, we can envision that CH4. Right, we got our methane plus two O two. Right. We can envision that going through this first step of breaking down into their elemental components. So I'm going to use the same number here. Right. So it's going to go through that first step. That first step is breaking down into the elemental components. So that means we break the CH4 and the O2 down into carbon and H2 and O2. Right now, anything that's a dimer at, um, you know, at standard conditions uh, is going to remain so. Right. So we wouldn't have just one atom of hydrogen. We would have the hydrogen dimer H2. Right. But now what we've done is basically strip this uh, compound down, this methane, into its elemental components of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Right. So now that we've broken them down into their elemental components, now we can do the next step of forming the products, right? So that second step is just forming the products. And our final products here are CO2 and H2O. Right, and you can kind of see just based off of this, um, just this example, that this should be able to be applied pretty much universally to any chemical reaction. Right. Whatever reactants you have, you just envision them breaking down into their elemental components and then those uh, broken up elemental components come together to form whatever products you have. 
Now, why is this a convenient choice for our uh, path for the chemical reaction? Well, that's where we start to think about something called the standard enthalpies of formation. All right, so these standard, standard enthalpies of formation. All right, so if the reaction that you're interested in is happening under standard conditions, right, so at uh, one, a constant pressure of one bar, uh, there are tables with thousands of these enthalpies of formation listed out. And uh, you can use those tables in order to uh, get the enthalpy change for the formation of pretty much a majority of common compounds uh, that you would think of, right? So uh, let's use water for an example, right? Uh, water, if we wanted to form water, its elemental components would be H2, right? Specifically one mole of water, so we'll use this one half O2, that would give us one mole of H2O, right? This would be the formation of H2O. So the table would have a formation enthalpy listed for water, right? So we'll have an enthalpy of formation associated with water, right? And the reason why I use this one half uh, stoichiometric coefficient is because all of the uh, enthalpies of formation that are listed in these tables are specifically for one mole of your compound. So, uh, so that's why you always want to would rather use these fractional stoichiometric coefficients than any whole numbers. Okay, so if we have all of these enthalpies of formation, then we have everything we need to be able to uh, imagine any chemical reaction being broken down into their elemental components and then having the products formed from those elemental components. Keep in mind that if we have the enthalpy of formation, then we do have the enthalpy of decomposition, right? So if we had the process H2O being broken down into H2 plus one half O2, right? This process would just be the negative of delta H of formation, right? Keep in mind that if you have the forward process, then you automatically have the enthalpy associated with the reverse process as well. So since we, if we have the enthalpy of formation for H2O, then we have the enthalpy associated with this decomposition as well. If we have all of that, then we can envision any chemical reaction being broken down and uh, re-put together in this way. Okay, so let's actually look at what um, a calculation of this type would look at. So would look like. So I'm looking at this exact same uh, reaction that we were looking at, right? So this is the combustion of methane gas with O2 gas. That'll form carbon dioxide and liquid water. So uh, if we want to envision this, uh, this reaction breaking down into its elemental components, the first step that we want to include here, so let me use a new color here. So the first step would be CH4 breaking down into solid carbon, oops, solid carbon plus H2, right? So this would be the first step that we want to think of, right? CH4 being broken down into its elemental component, right? So uh, there's going to be a enthalpy associated with this first step. And it's going to be the negative of the enthalpy of formation of CH4, right? So keep in mind that the formation of CH4 would be carbon plus H2 yielding CH4. What we're doing is the decomposition. It's the opposite. So this will be the negative of the enthalpy of formation of CH4. Okay, so next step. Right, O2 is already in its elemental form, so it's fine. We can just leave that there. So now we want to start forming the products, right? So CO2, we want to form that guy. So we can imagine this solid carbon interacting with O2 to form CO2. There's going to be an enthalpy associated with that process. 
So I'll call it delta H2. And that second enthalpy will just be the enthalpy of formation of CO2, right? This process is the formation of CO2. And so this is just going to be the enthalpy of formation for CO2. All right, and the last step, right now we just have to form the last product. So all we have to do is just have the enthalpy of formation for water, but specifically we wanna multiply it by two, right? Because we're forming two moles of water Keep in mind, like I said um, a few seconds ago, that the formation enthalpies are all given for one mole, right? So if we go back to that previous slide here, um, this reaction, we wanna multiply everything by two, right? So if we do that, then we're going to have two H2 gas plus O2 yielding two H2O, right? So again, there'll be an enthalpy associated with this process, oops, delta H3, and that will be uh, two times this uh, delta H of formation for O2, uh, H2O, right? So it'll be two times the enthalpy of formation for H2O. Right. OK, so now we have all of our steps. Right. So we've successfully imagined this reaction as this three step process. Right. The decomposition of methane and then the formation of CO2 and H2O respectively. Right. So now basically since uh, enthalpy is a state function, if we want the enthalpy of that reaction. Right. So we're after the delta H of reaction for this guy right, for this reaction, then we can calculate it now, right? We, all we have to do is have delta H of reaction. This is going to be equal to delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3. Right. And so the enthalpy of this reaction, when you add everything together, you get a final answer of negative eight hundred and ninety point three kilojoules for the enthalpy for this reaction, this combustion of methane. All right. OK, so um, all we did there. Right. All we did was just imagine this reaction as, you know, all of our reactants breaking down into their elemental components. And then we use the uh, the standard enthalpies of formation accordingly. Right. So now note that because we had this two here in front of H2O. Right. Note that we had to multiply the enthalpy of formation by two. Right. Uh, also note that for O2, since it was already in its elemental form, there is no enthalpy of formation for that guy. So we didn't include it in this calculation. So what Hesh's law is, Hesh's law is a general uh, form that basically acknowledges this form of calculation, right? This idea of breaking down the reactants into their elemental components and then uh, bringing them back together as the products, right? So the formal definition of Hesh's law, right? So Hesh's law basically says that the enthalpy of any reaction can be written out as the sum of the products, right? I'll use C for the stoichiometric coefficient. So basically C is whatever the stoichiometric coefficient is uh, for your for your system and the uh, the enthalpy of formation for your products right plus and let me actually put delta H formation for the products there right plus the sum over the reactants 
actually this is a negative, so minus the sum of the reactants. Their stoichiometric coefficients and the formation enthalpies for the reactants. Right, so this general definition is Hesh's law, right? Basically saying that it's products, the sum of the products, uh, formation enthalpies minus the sum of the reaction enthalpies and including the stoichiometric coefficients, right? So minor, these are the stoichiometric coefficients right so just like we did with this entire process right um, just imagining this reaction as the reactants breaking down into their elemental components and then forming the products from those elemental components Hess's law is just a general statement of that entire process